It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about a pretty cool looking application that you can run in Docker and it's made to run in Docker and basically in your browser but it's called WebTop. So what this does is it basically puts a full Linux desktop environment into your browser. So you're running this, you're, you're hosting it yourself, it's something that you can access from your browser and then of course if you set things up the way that we've done in the past where you've got Nginx Proxy Manager and a few other things running on your local network and you've got the right firewall rules set up and things like that you can actually reach this thing from outside of your own network. You could also set this up on something like DigitalOcean so you could access it from anywhere and really kind of have fast access to it. Um, I use DigitalOcean for a lot of my network, a lot of my environment, a lot of my, a lot of my applications that I run just because they're fast, they have really great service, it's really easy to set up a server very quickly. And then I use that script that I created to install Docker, Docker Compose, and Nginx Proxy Manager and Pertainer very quickly. Um, and then you just go out there and basically use Portainer or something like that to install this. Now you can completely do this through the shell or through the CLI. You don't have to use Portainer, but it's the same process either way. So I'll kind of go through both of those for you today. But we're going to get into the installation and the setup of WebTop right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post all of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that but if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting notifications through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you jump over and become a supporter on Patreon patreon.com I've got the links in the description and the show notes I appreciate your support thank you so much all right, so this is a Linux server.io uh, project that we're going to use today. They do a lot of really great stuff for Docker and Docker Compose, which I like because they make it really easy to do some really great things. Um, but they've got WebTop right here. And as we move down, there's some important, for, uh, important things for you to notice and understand. So they do have ARM versions here. So if you're running Raspberry Pi and you want to try this on a Raspberry Pi, you can do that. They've also got the AMD 64-bit versions if you need that. And that's what we're going to run today. But as you move down the version tags, now a lot of times I don't talk about version tags with Docker. We usually just go for whatever the latest thing is and we get that and we run it. Now if you want XFC running on Alpine Linux, then you are ready to go. Just jump in and go get it. But if you want Ubuntu with XFCE as the desktop environment, then you would put this tag. So it's very important. You don't have to put latest. If you just run what they have down below, it's going to grab this one as latest. But if you want something else, you need to put the specific tag that you want. So you can see the options you have. You have XFCE and Ubuntu, Fedora, and Arch. Then you have KDE and Alpine, Ubuntu, Fedora, and Arch. So in each one, you have different desktop environments. You have Mate, you have i3, you have Openbox, and then you have, uh, I think this is Ice Weasel is what it used to be. Maybe it's Ice WM. But anyways, you've got several different desktop environments that you can choose from. And then you can set up each one of these if you want to. You can say, you know what, I really like Arch. I want to set up XFCE and KDE and... It's just Docker, so you're basically just setting up different environments in Docker. And we'll kind of go through how you do that with multiple setups as well. Um, now they say go to localhost 3000. That's if you don't change any of the defaults for the ports, then it would be 3000. This is a very common port, so again, I'll probably change that as we go. Um, and then down here, they've got a little bit more information. So it says, by default, the user password is ABC slash ABC. So the user is ABC and the password is ABC. So they've kind of defaulted this. Now, you'll probably want to change this at some point, but it says, if you change your password or need slash want to log into the GUI at any point, then you need to put in this URL. So you need to add this little bit here at the end. So you've got the port, whatever port you choose, and then slash question mark login equals true, which basically means send me to the login portal don't just assume that this is the the default login because they're using guacamole in the back end to basically present this Linux front end to you uh, through RDP. And I think they're using XRDP to do that as well. So there's a lot of stuff that, that kind of goes into how this works, but really it, it's pretty great. So we're going to get into it. Now, the other thing is if you want to change the password through the UI, then this is the actual, or if you forget your password and you need to change it back or you want to change it to something else, this is the command that you use. So it's docker exec dash it web top and then the passwd and then whatever password you want after that. So in this case, it would set it to ABC, but you could change that to anything that you want. So down here, we've got a nice Docker Compose file. If you prefer the Docker CLI, you can do that. Honestly, when there's Docker Compose available, I kind of prefer it. So I'm going to grab this. I'm just going to highlight this whole thing. I'm going to copy it, 
And then I'm going to jump over here to Portainer, and I'm going to go to my Stacks. So this is basically how you create a Compose file in Portainer. Um, and I'm going to do Add a New Stack, and I'm going to call this uh, Web Top, and I'm going to call this, because I'm going to do the Ubuntu, well, we'll just do the latest first, and then we'll add another one. So we'll call this Web Top Latest. How's that? Uh, right here, we're just going to click. We're going to paste this in. It's just like if we were to create this in the command line. If we we're going to create a Docker Compose file, we'd do the same thing. We'd open open up a Docker Compose.yaml. We'd paste this in, and then we're going to make the same changes that we would make in the command line. So we're going to go up here and kind of check a few things. So first, this is the image. We're not going to put any tag right here after the image. So it'll it'll just be this. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see this online a little bit easier. Um, on your phones especially, but right here, right after WebTop, we're just going to leave this blank, and that means it's going to pull the latest image by default. The container name is going to be WebTop. Now, we can't name another container WebTop, so we should probably change this to latest. Let's just call it that. And then privileged true, so this means that you need a privileged connection. So we're setting up the security OPT. Here you can see it's set up as seccomp unconfined. We've got the user ID and the group ID. A thousand and a thousand is usually accurate, but you can check those in the terminal if you want to, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. And time zone. So you, you want to set this to the right time zone for your user or for where you live. So for me, it's America slash Chicago. And the subfolder is slash. We'll just leave that. That's fine. For the path to data, you can always change this to something that's a little bit more easy to find. And again, when you're trying to keep things organized inside of your Docker setups, you usually want to create a Docker folder and then use that as the starting point. And it, it's a little bit easier to do if you do it that way. So I'm going to say uh, dot slash Docker. And I think that that should work. And then we want to do a web top latest. And then this one we don't want to change. We just want to leave that alone. But here on this uh, port, I'm going to change this to 3020. And then we'll do the other, other ones going up from there. So here they've set up uh, the memory allocation as one gigabyte. So you can do more than that if you want to. So um, kind of feel free to play around with that a little bit. I think one gigabyte's fine uh, just for testing this out. So we're just going to leave it alone. And we're just going to say that that's good. So I'm first going to log into my server just to make sure. And basically, I'm going to go grab, uh, let's grab Tabby here. And if I do ls, you'll see here I've already got a Docker folder. And I'm going to make a directory, and it's going to be called web top latest. And that's all we needed to do right there, really. I'm going to clear that out. And we'll go back over to Portainer. Now, if I wanted to run this, uh, actually, we'll go ahead and do this through the command line because I told you I'd do it both ways. So we've got this set up. I'm just going to copy this text just to keep you from having to watch me edit the file again. Uh, I'm going to copy that. And we'll go back over to Tabby here real quick. And I'd go into the web top latest here. And I'd say nano docker hyphen compose dot yml. And then I would just paste that text right into there. And then do control O to save and then enter to confirm, control X to exit. And if I just do uh, ls now, you'll see we've got that docker compose.yaml file. To run that, we would just do docker hyphen compose up hyphen D. So this would basically bring up the docker compose file and it would run it in the background as a daemon. And you wouldn't have to really worry about doing anything else. When it says done, you're probably ready to go log into the system and everything should be ready. Now, I'm going to run this from Portainer since we've gone ahead and set it up as a stack in Portainer. So as you scroll down in Portainer, I'm just going to set Deploy here. Let me double check that I've got everything. Oh yeah, you can't use capitals. I forget all, all the time. Web top latest, I believe, should be okay as a name. You can't use capital letters and you can't use spaces in the names there. So this is going to deploy out, and I'm just going to zoom it back out a little bit, make it a little easier to see what's going on here. But we can watch the deploy. It's got a little spinner to tell you what's going on. So it's going to be pulling everything down that it needs, and it might take a few minutes depending on the size of what it is you're pulling down. Maybe something with KDE is going to be a little bit larger. It may take a little bit longer, but be patient. So here we've got WebTop Latest showing as a new stack, which is great. We can go over here to our containers, and we should see WebTop Latest, and it is running. So we'll go ahead and just check the logs here. 
you can see we've got some logs going all right so we can see it here we're going to come over we're going to click on the port in portainer and there we go it logs right in so we've got basically an xfce system set up here and ready to go and this is running again through Wacamole. It's running XRDP in the background. And you can see there's a little arrow over here. So we're going to click to the, the little arrow and you'll see there's a few more controls here that we can play with. So here's the password. Here's your clipboard if you want to see that as well. You can sw switch it to touch. Um, so you can get the keyboard up on the screen. I don't really need the keyboard up on the screen in this case, but it, you do have that option if you're using this over a touch device. You can close the keyboard right there. Now we can bring this back out. Then you can check out files. So basically you get this nice way to kind of manage your files from this view rather than trying to do it through the web system. So you can upload files from your main computer to the web system in the background or vice versa. You can download those files. So that's pretty great. Again, you got a little X over here in the corner. And then you got XFCE here. So if we open up the terminal, we can see here that it's running. And we can do um, uname dash a. We can get a little bit of information here. Um, I don't know if control shift plus. Oh yeah, look at that. It works even in the browser. So pretty nice. It opens up and, and kind of expands that text area for us. So you can see here this running Linux generic 5.4 and it's a 90 generic. And we've got, uh, it looks like it's, it's thinking it's a Ubuntu version. So it's really an Alpine version. But if we do apt update, apt command not found. So you'd have to go and get the apt command and install that. Um, I'm not sure if Alpine uses anything other than apt, but you, you could do sudo apt get. Nope, apt get is also not found. So you may have to do a few things to get apt installed to try to do anything to this system. Um, but you do have some other, other things already installed here. So you've kind of got the XFC menu that lets you do a few things here. You've got a few few different programs kind of set up already where you've kind of got your file explorer set up here. Kind of going to see if there's a CD-ROM. There's really nothing there. We can click here as well. Uh, we can click on the file system. We can see what all we've got here. And you can see it's pretty responsive. I mean, it's not like it's just taking forever for it to do things. It's pretty great, actually. I'm moving pretty fast. So if we move this around, if we drag it around, I mean, it's not super laggy or anything, which is pretty great. Um, let's see. Now if we do top, we can kind of get a feel here for what's going on. So right here, you can see here's the memory. We've given it a, a gig and you can see that it's really just running very, very minimal. And then here we've got CPUs. So it's got kind of CPU 0, CPU 2, what's going on there, CPU 1. So it thinks it's got four CPUs, which is pretty interesting. Um, so it may be able to see all the resources of the whole actual droplet that I've got and not just of the Docker container, which is interesting. Um, so if we do Q and we do exit, we get out of that. So it's pretty responsive. I mean, it's not bad. Now, I like this. I think it's pretty great, but I want to set one up that also has KDE. So let me go get that one installed and running, and then we'll kind of look at that one as well. So just give me a minute, and I'll kind of show you the difference between how we run those things. And I think I'll do the KDE one in the uh, terminal, actually. So um, we're going to just back this out and we're going to do, go back one so I, I do this again and I'm going to do mkdir web top kde oops and ubuntu so I'm going to give this a name so I know what it is and then I'm going to log into it and kde ubuntu and I'm going to say docker uh, nano docker golly if I could spell docker compose dot yml and I'm going to go right back to their web page here in the background I'm going to copy this text again. And then I'm going to go up here and just look at this to make sure I get the right tag. So I want the KDE Ubuntu version. So it's just Ubuntu dash KDE for the tag. I'm going to paste that in. Now right up here, we're just going to move up and we're going to go out here to the end. We're going to do colon and that's Ubuntu KDE. Make sure we spell it correctly. Um, everything else, we may want to change it to what we had before. And again, make sure you change your time zone and things like that. If you copy the file you did in the first place, you can save yourself a little bit of this manual changing each time. You'll just have a couple of things to change in that case. Um, so here, it's going to be dot slash docker slash 
There we go. That's going to be in our config area. And then we've got the rest of this stuff that's set. And now we're going to do 3021. And again, one gig is fine. Um, you can give it more if you want to. I'm going to change this to two gigs just to kind of show you what it does. Control O, save, and then enter to confirm. Control X to exit. And I'm going to go ahead and do docker compose up dash D. Now it's going to have some of the stuff already pulled down, but it's got to pull down some other things because this is a different desktop environment in this case. And here we get the little message that says that it's done, so that's good. All right, so we've got Kate, uh, KDE up and running here. And again, we've got this same menu that's off to the left, and you can open and close that with that little arrow. You've got the same taskbar you're used to with KDE. And again, if we click here, we get the KDE menu. Now I went ahead and installed LibreOffice, so I want to see how that works on here. Um, so if we do LibreOffice, we'll kind of watch it open up. And it opened up pretty fast, actually. Um, so if we say, let's do a spreadsheet. There it is. We've got a spreadsheet. It gives you the tips, everything like that. You can highlight, and just like before, you can move things around, kind of drag. It's got the littlest bit of lag with KDE. Um, it's lagging a little bit more, but again, for an experience where you're using this on the web, this is not bad at all. This is actually pretty good. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about something that's just not, not terrible to use and, and gives you a really good experience if you want it. And again, using something more like Mate or XFCE would probably give you a better experience on the web. But this is WebTop, so if you have users who you're trying to get onto Linux and trying to give them a chance to use Linux and a chance to get used to it, this could be kind of a good starter space, and you could kind of host this and kind of control things and keep it up to date for them, and really without much effort to do that. Um, so pretty great. But what about, like, can we install things? So I installed LibreOffice, but I want to show you what that looks like. Um, let me get the right uh, installer up. If you use the Windows key or the super key, it does not open the one in the browser. So just be aware of that. So we're going to go into console here. And uh, one of the things I like about KDE is it keeps the size that I set earlier. So I'm going to enlarge the font here a bit. And if we do um, sudo apt install, let's just do something uh, really simple. How about bmon? It's going to ask, we'll say yes, it's going to go out and going to do that installation. Beamon's really quick. If we do Beamon now, we can see what's going on and we can move down to our different uh, different systems for our, for our NIC cards here. So you can kind of see the NIC cards. There's not a lot graphing because there's not a lot going on on this server. Um, we can quit out of that. And yes, we did. We could do one more. Let's do sudo apt install. Let's do one that's a graphical user interface. Um, let's try GIMP. Yes. All right, so it's going out, it's installing, it's going to go grab GIMP. So if you've never used GIMP, that's an, uh, kind of like Photoshop, I guess is the best way to put it. But we can just click here and say GIMP. There we go. And again, if you've ever opened GIMP on your own machine, you might notice that that went really fast. So opening up GIMP was very quick here. We can make it full screen. We can click on the file menu. We can say, let's create a new file. Uh, it starts off with 1920 by 1080, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there we go. So we've got GIMP up and running, and we can grab some tools here. You can make this thing look more like what you would want, but there we go. We're drawing some stuff. We can draw this as a horrible little spiral, but there you go. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not an artist, so uh, don't hold this against me. You can make a smiley face here. Terrible, scary smiley face, but there you go. So this is pretty great. I think WebTop's kind of an awesome little application and a cool program. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really think WebTop is a great tool. If you think of a way that you could use this to make something better for other people as an IT admin or an IT pro or just a home user for your family, let me know in the comments or jump over to discuss.opensourceisawesome.com and let me know there. I'm at Mickintex as always. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.